In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to center and standardize variables in R. And I'll explain in a little bit what I mean by centering and standardizing variables. But first, let's make sure that we have RStudio open, which I have open here. And then let's go to File, New File, R Script to open up our R Script editor, which we will then turn into an R Script file when we save it. So that way we can track our work. And I'm going to use the hashtag to make a quick note here that this tutorial is about centering and standardizing variables in R. Okay, so the first set step, let's set up our working directory. And that is the location where we're saving the file that we're going to be using today. Now the name of the file that we're using today is going to be called diffpred with a capital D and a capital P dot CSV. Okay, and so that's this working directory folder I'm setting already has that file saved there. So I'm going to do set WD to do this manually here. And it's in my H drive R workshop folder. So by using the set WD function and putting this pathway here, I am noting that this is my working directory right here. And this is where this file is saved. So I'm going to click run there. Alternatively, you could have gone to session, set working directory, choose directory to locate that as well and to open that file. And that way you would set your working directory in that way. The next thing that we're going to do is let's read in the data. And we are going to be using the reader package to do that. And it's just reader all lowercase without that E between D and R. So there it is, reader. If you have never used this package before, or if you need to update it, maybe you haven't installed it recently, then go ahead and run this line right here. I'm not going to run it because I recently installed it and updated it. Instead, I'm going to use the reader package here within as the sole argument within this library function here to access this reader package and its functions. So let's click run there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is let's read in the data frame. Let's read in the data as a data frame here. So let's first come up with a new name for this data frame object. I'm going to call this diffpred here just to correspond with the name of the file here. It doesn't have to be, but I'm just doing that because uh, that what we're looking at here in terms of the data is going to be for practicing differential prediction because this data is used in another tutorial for moderated multiple linear regression and centering variables is often done within the context of moderated multiple linear regression, hence why we're using this data file here. So we use a left-handed arrow here to specify what, we're, what values we're going to assign to this new data frame object. And we're using the read underscore CSV function from the reader package. And we are going to enter the exact name of this data file here and make sure you include the .csv extension there. It's diffpred.csv within quotation marks there. Let's click run. And if we look over here in our global environment, we will see that data frame object here and we can orient ourselves to the variables. These, let's assume this is from a concurrent validation design, meaning we're trying to determine the extent to which this interview variable here predicts performance evaluation scores. So performance would be our criterion variable here. Um, interview scores would be our selection tool predictor variable there. So each row represents a unique person. So each case is a person here. And what we're going to be doing today is centering and standardizing the interview variable. So let's start with centering. And specifically, we are grand mean centering today. If you'd like to learn about group mean centering, I'll have a new, another tutorial for that. Um, typically, well, we wouldn't do gr group mean centering in a standard single level ordinary least squares regression model like this. Grand mean centering is what we will do. And why would we do grand mean centering? Well, one of the reasons that we do grand mean centering is for interpretation reasons within our regression model. So let's say that we have our regression model. And just for explanation here, let's say that y, which is our outcome variable, and then we have our intercept or constant value here. This is from, let's say, an estimated regression model. And let's say this is a simple linear regression model where there's just a single predictor variable. And then we have the um, x, which will represent our, let's say x represents the regression coefficient for our predictor variable, in which case we'll say that this is interview here, okay? So, and actually let's change this to be more descriptive. This is going to be perf eval. And just to make these consistent with what we see here, these are all lowercase, let's do this lowercase interview here, okay? So typically, if we don't grand mean center and we try to inter inter 
we try to interpret the intercept value here, the intercept value is going to be the mean of the outcome variable when the predictor variable is equal to zero. So if we were to do put zero here for the interview score and then fill out this equation, so whatever this intercept value is, so let's say the intercept value is 5.12, well, then if we set this equal to zero here for interview, just make a note here that that's what we're doing, then this value right here would represent the, the, uh, the mean of this outcome variable when we have the predictor variable set to zero. Now, if we take a look at our predictor variable though, and I'll do a quick sort here, you'll notice that it ranges from four to about 10. And let's say that on the interview scores, people could have theoretically scored as low as one. But there's the zero, there's no zero, let's assume, for this scale. So in that case, setting the interview variable here to zero doesn't make much conceptual sense if we're trying to interpret this, this value right here, the intercept value, okay? And so for that reason, sometimes we do grand mean centering just to ease the interpretation and make the intercept value more inter interpretable. With all that said, in many cases, we're not interested in actually interpreting the intercept value here. And so this would be somewhat of a moot point. However, if we were to grand mean center the interview variable, what it means is we'd create a new variable that's the centered variable, and it would be equal to, for each person, their score would be transformed by taking, let's say this person got a four on the interview score, then subtract the overall sample mean or the grand mean of everybody's interview score from their score. So if the overall sample mean was five, let's say, then it'd be four minus five. And so their centered interview score would be negative one, okay? And what that does is it shifts the mean to the average value for this variable. Uh, I mean, it shifts the mean to zero. And so what that means is that now when you have a score of zero on this centered interview score, uh, interview variable, it means that the um, you are at the average. And so that way, when you're interpreting the intercept and you use the centered variable, let's call this C underscore interview, which we'll eventually name it that, what we're saying is that we're setting the interview variable to its mean, and that's what we're interpreting here. Whereas if we had done it originally on the original variable, zero is kind of an out of bounds value for the interview. It's not that relevant. And again, you don't necessarily need to do this in the context of standard uh, simple linear regression like this, or even multiple linear regression, unless you want to do this for interpret, interpret, uh, interpretation purposes. Now, when people do moderated multiple linear regression, there's an interaction term or a product term. See the tutorial for more information on that. Often we do center both predictor variables before creating their product term in those models, okay? And that's to reduce collinearity between those predictor variables and their product term that they that we use to create them. Okay, so that's a brief crash course in why we would do grand mean centering. The process is actually relatively straightforward. And so to do grand mean centering, what we can do is just basic arithmetic. Okay, so the name of our data frame object is diff pred, and we're gonna use a dollar sign, and then we're going to specify what the name of our new variable is here. Okay, and so the name of our new variable is going to be whatever you want to call it. As I mentioned, I like to put a C underscore before variables, new variables that I create that I have um, grand mean centered. So the C stands for centered in my mind. And so I just use the exact same name of the original variable interview and then just add this prefix here that C underscore. And then we use the left handed arrow to do the variable assignment here. And then what we do is we take diff pred, the name of the data frame object again, and the name of the original variable that we're going to be centering, which is interview here, minus the mean of this variable. So this is the mean for the whole sample, or in other words, the grand mean. And then we're gonna add an additional argument within the mean function here. And the second argument here, or the additional argument is gonna be na to rm equals true. And this is just saying, remove any nas um, if we do have any, which means na being missing data if we do have missing data when calculating the mean here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And what you'll see is if we go back to our data frame object, 
we now have a new variable here that's the grand mean centered variable. Okay, and so as you can see here, this is actually going to be 7.5 minus the grand mean would get you 0 0.24 and some additional values there after the decimal point. And so if you scroll through here, what you'll find, and if you were to actually compute the mean on this, which we'll do in a second, a value of exactly zero would be the mean, okay? And so how do I demonstrate this? Well, let's just calculate the mean. I'm just gonna copy this and adapt this script and paste it below just to demonstrate that the mean is now about zero. It won't be exactly zero probably because of some rounding issues, but it'll be about there. So I'm just gonna specify here that it's actually this new variable we created, C underscore interview for the grand mean centered interview variable. Let's click run. And so what you'll see here, so this is saying, uh, this is a very, very small number, meaning it's practically zero. So you can imagine neg e to the negative 16 in terms of scientific notation means that if you were to look to um, put the decimal point 16 places over to the left, and meaning there's zeros that are gonna be coming after the decimal point um, up into this value, you'll see that it's practically zero. And so I can demonstrate this another way too, if you're not used to scientific notation, I can do round and then let's say to five digits, okay? And let's click run there. And you'll see if I round it there, that actually the value is for all intents and purposes, zero, okay? So that's essentially what we're talking about here when we're grand mean centering. We've just shifted, just done a linear shift and moved the mean so that now the mean is zero as opposed to whatever it was before. Because previously, I think the mean, if we run that, was 7.255. Okay, so that's how you grand mean center a variable. All right, and again, we do that for interpretation purposes. Another thing that you might do is standardizing a variable, okay? And so when we're standardizing, this is sometimes if you wanna do with certain types of, uh, depending on what regression function you're using, sometimes you have to standardize, or you, as an option, you can standardize the variables manually. And so when we standardize all that we're doing, it's similar in concept sort of to centering, except with standardizing, we're creating z-score variables, okay? We're creating, I'm sorry, z-scores for each case's um, score on a particular variable. And what that means is that the mean will be zero overall for the sample for this new standardized var variable we're creating, and the variance will be one. And if you take the square root of the variance, you get the standard deviation. So the square root of one is one, so that by, def by extension, the standard deviation is one as well. Okay, so this puts each variable in standard, in standard units. So this is, uh, you sh sometimes this is helpful for interpretation depending upon what your goals are. Okay, so it's relatively straightforward to do this as well. Just put in the name of your data frame, dollar sign, what do you want to call this new variable? I like to put st underscore and then the name of the original variable, which was interview. So that stands for standardize. Use the left-handed arrow to assign values to that. And then we'll use a function from base R that's called scale. And as the sole argument within this function, we just put the name of the data frame again, dollar sign, and then the name of the original variable that we wish to standardize. And so here you will see that it is um, diff pred is the name of the data frame, variable that we're standardizing is interview, and this is the name of the new variable we're creating that's gonna be standardized. Let's click run. Let's take a peek at it there. And now you'll see we have another new variable here. And so again, zero is going to be the mean because these are now all z-score variables here. And watch what happens if we run the standard deviation here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take, just use the SD function from base R, and I will just plug in this value here, and then do na.rm equals true for the missing values in case there are any. So I'm just gonna calculate the standard deviation for our new standardized variable, and you'll see the standard deviation is one, okay? And if you wanna verify that, we can also do this with the variance, okay? which is another function from base R. And we see that the variance is also one here, okay? Now, what was the standard deviation of the original variable? Let's copy SD here, and let's take away the prefix. So we just look at the original variable, which is interview, and run that, and we'll see the original standard deviation was 1.205. So we've transformed this variable so that the mean is zero 
and the standard deviation and variance are equal to one. So again, they're in standardized units now, okay? So a score of one means that you're one standard deviation above the mean, a score of two, two standard deviations above the mean, a score of negative two, two standard deviations below the mean, okay? All right, so this wraps up the lecture on centering and standardizing variables in R. So in this tutorial, you've learned how to grand mean center specifically, as well as to standardize your variables um, by translating them into Z-scores. Thank you.